Hello, I am Davina, and hello to all of you bold, beautiful, brilliant, and evolving souls. Today, I am going to talk about no bad kids. And this is a term that I heard first from uh, Janet Lansbury, who is a specialist in childhood development. And I truly believe that this is so important to understand that there are no bad kids and that what you did as a child was just, you know, a child's natural behavior. You were learning, you were curious, you were exploring, you were experimenting, you were figuring things out. And it was your parents' job to give you the, the emotional support you needed, the, the boundaries, the guidance, and all of that so that you could develop and that you could understand, um, you know, the societal norms and what is, you know, what is hurtful to others and what is safe and what is not safe. All these things, this is what your parents um, needed to be teaching you. But unfortunately, of course, when you have a narcissistic parent, instead of them, you know, teaching you and um, explaining things to you and helping you and supporting you um, because they don't understand childhood development and they have unrealistic expectations and they, um, you know, they have no ability to, you know, connect to themselves. They, they, they're not aware of what they're feeling. And so they end up, of course, just resorting to control tactics. So we were brainwashed to believe that we were bad by our narcissistic parents. This is the narrative that we had to accept. It was the only thing that was acceptable. We had to take on, especially the scapegoats, had to take on that um, their shame. We had to take that on as, I am bad. There's something wrong with me. I am inadequate. I am the problem. I am the difficult one. Um, when of course it's, it's not, it's, it's them, right? They are the ones that are <clears throat> being hurtful, being disrespectful, um, unable to connect empathetically, unable to set boundaries. So we end up feeling the shame and the self blame and, um, and we feel like we deserved it. And this feeling that we deserved it can be, I mean, it was a survival tactic because we couldn't see that our parents were, you know, incapable, inept caregivers. This is an impossible thing for a child to accept. You know, <laughs> these are the parents, these are the people that are, you know, going to help like keep me alive. Right. So a child has to take that on. They have no other, nothing else. Other, the cognitive dissonance is just like too impossible for a child to, to handle. Um, so they have to, um, or I guess they take on the, anyway, I'm not exactly sure how that works, but um, anyway, no matter what you did as a child or even as a teenager, um, you were learning. It was your parents' job to teach you what was appropriate and how to be safe. Um, narcissistic parents will often say, you know, you should know better. And this is another way that they shame their child. Um, you know, like babies, babies, all babies, like toddlers throw, you know, by the time they're, you know, eating solid foods or six, eight, 10 months, you know, they're throwing food on the floor because they don't know. Um, and an um, emotionally immature narcissistic parent, of course, will, you know, get angry at the child and, you know, you're not listening to me. How come you threw food on the floor again? And like yelling at them and scolding them for something that they're just like, gravity what's this what happens oh it's now on the floor like they don't know they really don't know and the narcissistic parent is so immature that they cannot understand this um or like a child who is like there's a plant and so they're just learning to walk and they walk over to the plant and they're digging in the dirt in the plant and then again then you know um the a narcissistic parent would be like yelling at them like get away from that plant you shouldn't be doing that um, you know, just yelling, scolding, 
instead of going, hmm, you know, maybe I could move the plant or, you know, create a safe environment for my child so that I don't have to like, um, it's their responsibility. Um, it's also really important to understand that the child, very young anyway, I'm not sure what up to what age, but lives completely from their limbic system. They live on like just pure emotion, pure like desire and just whatever is, you know, they just act that out, you know, um, they don't know how to regulate their emotions. So they feel something and then they act on it, um, even if it's not what we would call, you know, appropriate. So, you know, they might um, feel angry and they might hit something or throw something or they might even push someone or bite someone, you know. Um, as a nanny and, and caregiver, I've had children bite me. And, you know, again, like some might think, oh, this is bad. Wow, you have a bad child. They bite you, you know. Um, but a child is, again, just expressing what's going on on their insides, you know, on, on an emotional level. So children bite because often they're very frustrated about something and they don't know how to say it. You know, they don't have the words yet. And so they will bite out of anger or frustration. And also I found that they can also bite because they have an intense feeling of love. So they'll give their parent like a love bite. I've seen this before. Um, so um, it's important to really see the, the pure and innocent sort of intentions behind the behavior. But this is coming from a feeling, a need that the child is having. So instead of just saying that is a bad behavior to like look at the behavior and and see what's underlying that behavior. What is the feeling? What is the need? And this is what healthy parents do. Um, written a lot of notes there. Um, I had an, a child, I think I've told this story before, but she was coming home and she suddenly just like seemed to get upset and she threw a muffin on the ground and the mother, the narcissistic mother was like, what's this bad behavior? And, um, you know, immediately just scolding and shaming the child. Um, and of course, this is totally like, and again, I don't want to use the word bad and wrong either on the parent. Um, I'll just put an aside for that. But, um, you know, the first thing you do is you, you go over and you connect to the child and you go, you get down on their level and you go, hey, you know, what's going on? It seems like you're upset. Are you, are you upset because you wanted to play longer at the park? And then they go, yeah, you know, and they're like, ah, I wanted to play longer because then they're, you're giving them the language, you're explaining to them. And now they have the connection. I feel upset because I had to leave the park earlier than I wanted to. And they make these connections and this is how they start to regulate. And, um, and, you know, and then later, once they're regulated, then you explain to them, you know, um, you know, we don't throw things when we're angry. What can we do when we're angry? Oh, you can, you know, hit a pillow or you can go like this and show your anger. So you teach this child because they don't know. They have no verbal ability to express how they're feeling. Um, yeah. So. Um, and so, yeah, as I was saying, like children communicate through their behaviors and it's up to the caregiver to to be a bit of a like detective and to figure out what is the feeling, what is the need underlying this behavior? Because if we immediately judge that behavior, then we're not seeing the child. We're not seeing them as a whole person that is, you know, um, you know, having like real emotions and then not knowing what to do what, with that emotion, with that very, and they have very, very intense emotions as, as little ones, you know? Um, emotionally immature parents, narcissistic parents are clueless as to the fact that their child is having real valid emotions um, and that these parents are not able to like em empathize, they're not able to connect, they're not able to set boundaries and instead of, so instead of the parent taking on that shame, they pass it on to their child and they result, they resort to, you know, the control tactics, the shaming, the blaming, the gaslighting, invalidating, in intimidation and threats and all the rest of it. And then the child is, of course, taking on all that shame, all that blame.
um, immature parents will um, often, you know, like just yell at the child, you know, um, I was going to explain a situation, for example, um, you know, a child is going outside and you, um, you know, you need to explain to them that we need to wear a sun hat, you know, so an Im the immature parent will just say, you know, you need to wear your sun hat and don't take that off. And again, just, you know, just yelling or threatening. If you don't wear that sun hat, no dessert for you tonight, just an unrelated kind of punishment. Um, and a healthy caregiver or parent will explain, you know, they'll, they'll, they'll role model. They'll show themselves like I'm putting on my hat. We're going outside. Um, they will give a choice. Would you like to wear the blue sun hat or the yellow sun hat? And, and they will explain in simple terms, you know, like we need to wear a sun hat to protect our skin, to protect our face. Cause it's the strong sun, you know, like you just, you get, you do gestures, you, you know, you try to sh explain to them. And again, at an age appropriate level. Um, and then you explain the consequences, you know, um, if you wear your hat, we get to play in the sun. And if you're not wearing your hat, then we'll play in the shade or we'll need to go back inside. You just make it matter of fact. There's no judgment. There's no blame. There's no punishment. Just very matter of fact boundaries and consequences. Um, so, yeah, like a child doesn't know what is, you know, they don't understand what is appropriate or they don't know that they have to wear a hat and why they're wearing a hat. They don't know. You got to, you got to explain it to them. Um, again, like parents, are responsible. They are responsible for teaching the child and for being a role, role model. Um, and even if you think that, you know, as a teenager, you were selfish or you were rude or you were obnoxious to your parents, um, you are still, you are not a bad kid. Really, you're not a bad kid. Um, you know, it. Um, your brain at that age still isn't fully developed your executive functioning is still not fully on board. And, um, you know, I've also read that, you know, you teenagers act impulsively because they don't understand, they haven't, they don't have that brain connection in between action and consequences totally there yet. So, um, you know, and they're going through a whole bunch of, again, a whole bunch of emotional stuff as in adolescence. And it's still up to the parent to set, boundaries and expectations and this is what I expect and this is you know how we behave in our house and all these kind of things you know narcissistic parents often um you know expect their child to like already know how to do things like they expect um you know a child to like just sort of pop out in the world like a mini adult or something um like a three-year-old getting ready to go outside you know that three-year-old you know, it depends on the child too, but many three-year-olds need the steps explained. You know, we do this first and then we get this and then we do this and then we go outside. Um, so you, you help your child. Oh, it's raining out. So what do we need to wear? And they go, I need to wear my rain boots. And you're like, yeah, that's right. We need to wear rain boots today. So you make them feel successful. You make them feel like, um, you know, that they're supported and, um, and, and you're with them, you're on their level, you're giving them the support that they need. And if they can do it independently, then you let them do it independently. It works that way too. Um, and of course, this takes a lot of patience and time. And narcissistics are the opposite. They will push their child, they will rush their child. They will, again, as I said, treat their child like some mini adult that has should already know how to do these things. Um, and they don't understand like age appropriate um, behaviors, age appropriate development. Like what can I expect my child to be able to do at this age? They don't understand this. Um, and so they, again, they end up, you know, yelling at the kid, threatening the kid. I'm going to leave without you if you're not ready in two minutes. And the child doesn't even understand the concept of time, you know? So all of this is just absurdity and insanity. Um and um, yeah, so basically children, yeah, very young ages, they don't have the the social emotional skills and um, they don't, yeah, they're not acting ever in, they're never behaving badly. And this is, you know, something that I still see, you know, when I sometimes Google things, you know, and they'll say like, 
they'll call things like bad behaviors. And that's just such a, you know, there is no bad, there are no bad kids and there are no bad behaviors either. There are behaviors that are maybe inappropriate. There are behaviors that are hurtful, that are behaviors that, um, um, you know, maybe are not so kind, behaviors that are not helpful, um, but there are no bad behaviors. And this actually um, also works for the narcissistic parent. I truly believe on a very spiritually mature level that there are no bad parents, but, <laughs> but, and there's a big but here, when we're healing, we need to let our child, um, you know, be that child and like think of their child, think of what they would say, you know, to the parent, they would say, you're being bad, you're being mean to me, you know, like, so allow your child to say that to your parent, you know, in, in your imagination or in a role play, you know, um, with your therapist or whatever. Um, you're allowed to call your parent bad. You're allowed to call your parent an asshole. You're allowed to say, you fuckers, you know? Um, you're absolutely allowed to do that as you are healing because, and that might take, who knows, a whole lifetime. So um, that's okay. Um, but there are no bad parents, just parents who are reacting to their child's behavior. They are reacting from their own unhealed pain their own wounds, their own shame, their own rage, um, their own fear, all of that is coming up and they are, you know, dumping it onto their child. Um, so the, the, it's the parent, the parent is being hurtful. The, per, the parent is being insensitive. The parent is being disrespectful. The parent is inept in their parenting skills. It is never the child. And in our, many of our societies, it's like at 18, you are the, then you are the adult. Then you are fully, you know, um, you know, by law accountable. So if you hit someone when you're 18, you will be arrested for assault. Whereas when you hit someone when you're 12, you know, you're not, you know, because again, your parents are responsible for teaching you these things. Children are learning. And I hope that makes all sense. And um, I'm wishing you many blessings on your journey of healing and awakening. And I am Davina at Boldness Blooming. <laughs>